What's up, everyone? Bashar Ketu here with BJK University, coming to you with episode number six. It's incredible to even think about that. This is episode number six. As promised, we have actually come up with a name to our podcast, which is incredible. So after hundreds of, you know, names that you guys have suggested, and by the way, thank you very much for playing full out, for helping us out on this journey, on this quest to finding a name. We have come up with the name Impact Hour, the Impact Hour podcast, which was suggested to us by Eric Lico. We'll put his, uh, his name in the um, on the screen. He'll be winning $1,000 in cash. As promised, we'll be sending that out to him here shortly. But just wanted to say, you know, it's been such a privilege to uh, be providing some type of content and value to you guys because at the end of the day, this is the reason why we created this is, you know, all the lessons that we have learned over the years, all the things that we have uh, came across, I just wanted to kind of put them all, package them together, and give them to you. So one thing that we have decided to do is every week we have, uh, uh, you know, a team that goes through all the YouTube comments and comments on Instagram and everywhere else, and they draw for us uh, questions that you guys post in the comments. Um, and, and this is how we're going to pretty much run this podcast, at least for the next short while, is we're going to look at questions that you guys have, you know, dropped in the comments, and we're going to take those and we're going to answer them because, again, this is just our way to sharing knowledge with you guys. But at the end of the day, it's all about we want to make sure that we share, uh, you know, the value with you guys. So, Aaron, what's up, buddy? Episode number six, man. Holy shit. Yeah, this is good times, man. Loving the journey. Impact yeah. our fucking rights it is. So what, what What do you, I mean, because I know that uh, we came up with a whole bunch of, um, you know, with a whole bunch of names, but then, like, we, we kind of had, like, the team decide on, on the name, and then they, they kind of, you know, dropped in Impact Hour, and they really loved it. Well, what do you what what do you think that is? I mean, what, what's going on there? Well, BJK is all about impact, man. The reason we went with Impact Hour and the reason that our team was pushing Impact Hour in the comments was because everybody's on the journey to make an impact, a million lives yes. at a time, make a ripple in this fucking world in a positive way with integrity. That's why Impact Hour is such a great name. It encompasses what the BJKU community is all about. Yes. Yes. All right. So how, what, what do you think of this um, kind of like taking questions from the comments and answering uh, uh, um, our our community's questions and then just kind of like expanding on those? Is that I mean, I know we kind of said on that. I mean, you like that direction, right? Man, taking taking questions from the community, I think, is the best thing we could possibly do, because like you and I, when we were starting out, we had lots of questions about how to start a business, how to go online, how to transition and do certain things. And it's yeah. just great to be able to see questions from people who were where you are or are where you were, vice yeah. versa, and be able to give that feedback and, and 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 close that loop for them. So it's a great thing. I love it, and I'm just excited about it, man. Absolutely. All right. So here's let, let's get let's get the questions and start answering them. So um, right at the top, uh, the first thing is leverage. Um, did you raise capital to finance your online business, or how do you raise capital to finance your online business? What are some thoughts you have? Well, when it comes to raising capital for your online business, it's like you got to get fucking resourceful. As an entrepreneur, you need to own your resourcefulness. Nobody's coming to do it for you. No one's coming to save you. You have to find a way to make it happen, whether that's your money, other people's money, loans, selling shit, garage sale. You got to do whatever it takes. If you want to make it in this world, especially as an entrepreneur, you have to get resourceful. I love that. And, and, and another thing that uh, it says here, how to start a business when you're broke. Um, it's very interesting because I remember when I first started, I was $150,000 in debt. And literally, I had already cashed out everything that I could to getting loans, to, to um, you know borrowing money, to whatever, because I had no credit. I had already borrowed all the money that I could borrow. And so I did not only start when I was broke, but I was $150,000 in debt. So I, I guess these are three things that if you're watching uh, and you're broke and you want to start a business, there are three things for you that you can actually start today and start any business, whether if it's Amazon or anything else, for me personally. Number one is get a vehicle. Figure out a vehicle. What's the vehicle that you want to get on, right? For me, it was Amazon FBA. What's the vehicle that doesn't have a ceiling but it's it's like the more you put into it, the more you get out of it, right? No ceiling. So if you have a job, it might be a little difficult. But, you know, if you're starting a business or whatever, that would be perfect. The side hustle, right? The second thing is find a blueprint, right? Find a blueprint that's going to 
help you on that vehicle that's going to actually get you where you're trying to go uh because the the what the what the blueprint does it it accelerates the learning curve it gets you you know it helps you avoid all the mistakes and you get to like jump into the thing that you're trying to do and then the third thing is find money and for me finding money is opm other people's money and i want to hear from you more aaron about that but other people's money for me changed the game for me because I was raised with the mindset of you need, you, you don't borrow money, don't partner up with people. And once I came out of that like mindset shift and I looked at like, you know, Silicon Valley companies and all the billion dollar companies in the world, it's like, well, there's a reason why they go public because they want to use other people's money to grow, right? And that's just like, it's not a non-ethical way to do it. We all use other people's money with our credit cards. We borrow money from from uh, uh, from banks to go to school. It's like, well, why not, you know, why not use that money to start a business? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, man, on the topic of other people's money, I read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm sure a lot of you have read that book out there. That yeah. book changed my fucking life. Sitting by the pool in Bali, working in a hotel, I told my wife, I said, listen, there's other ways to go about building a business. There's this thing called OPM. And you know, you look at credit cards, you look at banks, you look at other big businesses, and you realize none of them are using their own fucking money. They're all using other people's money. So we'd be stupid not to learn the way to do that. And there's lots of ways to do it. Credit card is one. Uh, bringing on partners is another one. Getting loans from various places. Uh, you know, giving people equity, right? Like there's lots of ways to do it. You can get creative, but yeah. you have to also understand that at the end of the day, you have to provide some value for that. OPM does not mean free money from the sky. It means you got to get to fucking work and pay that back with interest. But if you believe in yourself and you believe in the product and the thing you're producing, you're going to do well and you can do it with other people's money. That's awesome. It, and Sorry, I was going to say, you used OPM at the beginning of your journey, right? Oh, dude, I mean, that, that's how I started. I borrowed $5,000 from my mother, my now mother-in-law. She was my girlfriend's mom at the time. I uh, launched first couple of products is in that. I borrowed money from my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, to start my Amazon business and uh, and invest in a course. Um, and that's the thing that a lot of people, I think, miss out on is that they, they look at their bank account and they want to start a, a business with a budget. But right. that's literally the last thing you want to do is starting a business with a budget. You want to look at what does the business need and, and, and ask the right questions. Where do I get that money from, right? Because that money is literally everywhere. You could go anywhere you want and get the money. $10,000, usually that's what we suggest people starting is $10,000. People have that money. Every, people all around you, I don't care where you live. If you live in Pakistan and in India and Afghanistan, if you live in Iraq, if you live... In America, anywhere you live, there is ten thousand dollars around you. Someone has that ten thousand, and they would be freaking crazy not to invest with you. But that's what you need. You need a vehicle, and you need a blueprint, so that way you can go to the investor and say, "Hey, I've got this way. This is how I'm going to make you money. This is how I'm going to, you know, this is what I'm going to." Because an investor is going to say, "How much am I going to get a return on my investment? How long is it going to take to for me to get my money back?" And so, yeah. if you say, "I don't know shit." I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have someone guiding me. They'll tell you to go fuck yourself. But that's why having a vehicle, having a blueprint are very important. Yeah. Dude, having a vehicle and having a blueprint when you're using OPM or using your own damn money for that fucking matter, it's a must. It's yes. not a should. It's a must. And if you're using OPM, if you're gathering funds to make this happen and you absolutely can do it, you did it when you were hundreds of K in debt. I did it with like 5K in the bank, something less than that even. <laughs> it's like when you don't have the money and you go find the money, you better make damn sure that you do have a blueprint to follow, that you have a community of people supporting you, got some sort of mentorship, people that have walked the path before you that can show you how it's done to ensure a good <laughs> chance at success. You still got to do the fucking work, but you better be damn sure you have a good group of people around you before you start taking OPM. But OPM is everywhere. You just got to get resourceful and believe in yourself. Yes, absolutely, man. Believing in yourself. It all starts with your mindset. The second thing um, that I want to get into is um, AI. So we have some questions. And by the way, guys, I'm just reading questions that we got in the comments. So if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments because we read every single comment that gets dropped. And if this is your first time watching this podcast, if you've never, you know, came across uh, 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 this this channel or whatever be sure to share this with someone that you care about someone that is starting a business someone that 
you know, maybe isn't very resourceful that you believe that can probably, you know, benefit from listening to this. So be sure to guys subscribe and share this with someone. All right. So another question that we got was about AI. Uh, yeah. This is a very, I think, controversial and very important topic that many people have been thinking about. So AI, what are your thoughts about AI? Do you think it's a good or a bad thing for humanity? I want to hear your thoughts and I have some thoughts about this. <laughs> Fuck. Well, when it comes to AI, it's just the simple get on board or be fucking taken over by the robots. <laughs> it's that fucking easy. Either get on board and figure out how to run the fucking robots, be that guy, yep. or get taken out by the robots. We yep. see all sorts of people losing their jobs thanks to AI. It's like, yeah, no shit. But who's going to run the AI? Who's going to do the coding? Who's going to keep up with the maintenance of the AI? Right? That's where you want to be looking. And that's a very exciting thing. I was just driving through Italy the other day and I saw a, a backhoe doing some work on the road. And I looked at the backhoe and I saw a fat guy sitting in this backhoe with some levers and he was building some shit. And I was like, dude, that is the machine from like 50 years ago that came in the Industrial Revolution and took over. And people were like, oh my God, we're going to lose our job shoveling stuff. No, dude, we made a bunch of mechanics and people who had to learn how to drive that shit. It's exactly the same with AI now. Get on board or get eaten alive. What do you think about AI? Dude, I, you know, it's uh, exactly what he just said. Um, it's like when Uber came out and people, you know, taxi drivers started kind of going crazy. When when Airbnb came out and said, you know, hotels are going to go out of business or whatever. All it is, all, all, all you know, like, like Tony Robbins says, all business is innovation and marketing. So you have innovated and you're marketing it. You're making people's lives easier, right? Like, for example, we look at our marketing team and we, we, we have, you know, we used to have a bunch of uh, copywriters and we realized we can have one copywriter that does the job of like three or four, you know. Now, the others potentially lost their jobs with us, yes, but they can go and become more valuable to other companies. The one copywriter can become more valuable to three, four companies at the same time, doing the same amount of work, spending the same amount of hours and getting paid three, four, five times more, right? Uh -huh. Because now they can do so much more with, say, Jad GBT. Uh, uh -huh. uh, there was all these tools that, um, like, uh, what is it called? Eleven Labs, uh, uh -huh. the one with the sound. You know, you you upload your you upload your your uh, your 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 voice or whatever. You read a script, you upload it, it clones your voice, and anyone can go type stuff. Like I know Adam from our team was like going crazy about it and like creating all these things. And all technology does, whether AI or any other technology. It enhances the experience of the humankind. It makes yeah. our experiences better. So one question that I see here as well and on that topic is, should we be worried about or what should we be worried about? And if I was you, I would look at my skill level in the marketplace and say, how valuable am I to the marketplace? And if you are on the tip of, well, I'm either valuable or if not, if I'm not, you need to acquire a higher level of skill in order for you to be more valuable because the less valuable you are, the quicker you're going to be out of a job, right? It's like truck drivers. Look, Elon is going to, you know, Elon is going to make trucks that drive by themselves here pretty soon happen, right? Yeah. If you're a truck driver, your fucking job is on the line here any second. Yeah. So it's like, but instead of crying about it, how the fuck can you be more valuable to the marketplace? How can you be more valuable to economy so that way you can, number one, improve your lifestyle, and number two, all innovation does is it forces people out of their comfort zone, and those that are that are winners thrive, and those that you know that are just victims, they'll they'll kind of end up in the corner crying. So you just have to decide which one of the two you have you want to play, you know? Yeah, man, totally. When you're looking at AI, you're talking about value and increasing your value via a high income skill like managing AI, right? We talk about our team. They are doubling down on learning fucking AI right now, heavily, right? And so it's like someone's at home. They're thinking, well, how can I make more money from home? It's like, dude, how many fucking high income skills do you have that you can leverage on the internet right now? Everyone says, oh, the internet's the future. It's like, no, dude, the internet was the past. We're in the internet now. The future is AI, bro. You missed the fucking beginning of the internet. Yep. So if you're sitting at home with no high income skill online, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? And 
If you want to go to the next level, you better get on the AI train. We use AI for all sorts of shit now. And we're like elementary AI users, but we're in that shit because yep. we see it as the future. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's to me, it's so obvious, but it's like anything in life. Some people will look at the negative and see only fear, right? Some people will look at AI and be fearful of it. They'll see the, they'll see the negatives. They'll, they'll feel like it's taking from them. Other people will look at AI and they'll see the positives. They'll be like, oh my God. I can leverage that to my benefit. I can use that to become better. I can use this to provide more value to more people and make more money or whatever you want to do with it. So there's two ways to look at it. It's the same as life. It's no fucking different. AI, make a choice. Are you scared of it? You're going to run away from it? Or are you going to embrace it and leverage it? It's just like anything, right? Well, whatever you focus on expands. So you just got to decide what you focus on. Yeah. All right. And kind of to, to shift gears a little bit, another question that I see here. Um, this is going kind of going into the the, the Amazon, uh, you know, uh, uh, space. What advice would you give to someone just starting out as an Amazon seller or any entrepreneur in general? What's your top two or three things? I, I know I have my own stuff. Anyone who wants to become an entrepreneur, whether it's online or offline, whether it's Amazon or anything else. The number one thing you need to do is get out of your own fucking way and take action. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to feel right. You're always going to be scared. The number one thing you need to do, in my opinion, is get with someone who's done it before, learn from them, and start putting one foot in front of the other and yeah. fail fast. Fuck it up as quickly as you fucking can. Recover and keep it moving. That's the number one thing. That's awesome. I love that. Um, you know, for me, I always say that it's important that whatever it is you're trying to do, and it goes back to, um, to kind of what you said earlier, anything you're trying to do, someone else has done it before you. So you want to tap into, uh, to, to their, to their footsteps and, and what they've done. But what you want to get out of it is the not to do's more than how to do's, right? And because the how to do's are everywhere. The not to do is only a limited people are actually willing to share them because they're not so glamorous, right? It's what well, if someone has, you know, uh, 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 if someone has has done something. Let's just take Amazon. If you've launched, you know, five products that actually became successful, what they will focus on is the five products that were successful. They won't tell you about the ten other products that were unsuccessful and the thousands of dollars they wasted or they spent or whatever, right? Because it's yeah. not so glamorous. So. For me, what I've realized is from my mentors, the biggest thing that I've learned is the what not to do is more than the how to do's. So that would be the first thing is. And then the second thing is, and I, we, we kind of covered it earlier, never start a business on a budget. Like literally, I, 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 this, this, I need to make this a billboard and put it on, the, on freeways <laughs> like everywhere all over the world. All over never fucking start Miami. A, Dude, mustache and just, fucking billboards. <laughs> literally, never start a business on a budget. And I see this happen all the fucking time. People say, well, you're saying that you need $10,000 to start an Amazon FBA business, you know, but I only have $2,000. I only make $500 a month. I live in India. I do this. I'm like, sure, I, I get that. But picture me eight years ago with $150,000 in debt. If I had thought those same thoughts, I would have never gone anywhere. But that's where yeah. you kind of need to, like, as you said, get out of your own way and then start looking at, like, okay, how the fuck did Mark Zuckerberg build a billion, mil fuck a billion, almost a trillion dollar company right now, right, when he was just a kid in school? Well, you could say, you can make the argument of, well, he was a, you know, he was a smart kid and he went to Harvard and he did all this. Yeah, sure, but how did he make it happen, bro? He got yeah. together... He got resourceful and he started something. And then from there, he realized that, you know what? There's all these rich assholes that I can go tap into and I can start bringing on as investors into my company. And I can take OPM. and give exactly give some, you know, small pieces of my company, like what me and you have done with school. You know, Sam um, Ovens came out and said, hey, guys, I want to scale. I want to scale a, a school. Consulting.com is what brings me money so I can invest in school, but I don't have time to invest in, in, in consulting.com. I want to sell this. I want to just focus on school, 
but I won't have anywhere that's going to feed me money anymore. How the fuck am I going to do this? Are you guys willing to invest with me? Invest with me. I'll take your money. I'll put it in school and I'll keep scaling it. And he said, fuck yeah, sign me up, right? Yeah, take it. So there we go. So it's like never look at a business or at your bank account and start a business that way. Look at what the business requires and then go about it that way. Any other thoughts here? Well, just like you starting a business, multi six figures in debt, you hear people say, I can't do it. I only make X a month. I've only saved up this much a month. It's all limiting beliefs. Yes. So what's a limiting belief? It's a belief that you have that is limiting your ability to take action. We all have them, but there is a formula to break them. Number one, is there a slight possibility, maybe just maybe, slight possibility that you could do it? Yes. The answer is always fucking yes. Secondly, has anybody come before you with your circumstances or even worse and fucking pulled it off? Yes. Well, right there you go. Number three, list 20 fucking ideas you have of how you could actually make this happen. How can you get OPM? By the time you get to about the 10th or 15th uh, on the list, you're going to start opening some doors in your mind and it's going to show up. Do this exercise anytime you're struggling with a limiting belief and you'll break through it. But most people get stuck at, I can't. Yes. You can, but you got to do the work here. And then you got to put one foot in front of the other. That's right. Absolutely, man. 100% agree with you. Why is Amazon FBA your vehicle of choice? Yeah. Why did you choose Amazon out of all the different ways <laughs> when you started, man? Like for me, I know I tried a million fucking things, but like why Amazon with you? What the fuck is the deal? Like, I, Bezos, you want to go to space with them? You like a shaved head? What the fucking, what's up with Amazon? You know what's interesting is, um, and I just realized this recently, is since I was a little kid, my favorite color was always orange. Oh, and yeah. so maybe that's why, I don't know. It was, it was the orange <laughs> color, you know, it was attractive. Yeah. Um, so I did try a lot of things. I did try, um, I tried affiliate marketing a little bit. I tried uh, uh, trading stocks. I tried uh, real estate wholesaling. I tried, um, I got into crypto a little bit, lost some money there. I must have tried like two or three other things. And then Amazon stuck with me um, for a few things. Number one, and this was the first stat that I saw that like blew my mind. 53% of all online sales happen on Amazon. All online sales. All fucking online sales, bro. 53%, right? Dope. Number two, over 120 million yearly subscribers spending between $1,200 to $1,700 per year on Amazon. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that number is. I, have, no, I haven't found a calculator that goes that, <laughs> that big, right? A trillion, trillion, bazillion, gajillion dollars worth of money. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Looking at their trajectory since the, 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 the beginning of Amazon until now, they've consistently grown as a company 20 to 25% year oh. over year, year Man. over year. And that's not, that's not easy to do as we've okay. seen, you know, right now trying to grow BJK University. At that level, when it's small, it's like, yeah, we ten x our company in 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 one year. But it's like, okay, when you're talking about tens of bil hundreds of billions of dollars, can you continue to do that profitably? Yeah. Right. Um, the other thing was the 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 fact that they are so customer satisfaction centric. They right. care about the end user. There, it's all about how do I deliver value to the end user. Um, another thing was the fact that they, that it's like this whole, we've talked about this in previous podcasts. It's this whole, um, idea of intrapreneurship, not entrepreneurship, intrapreneurship. I knew that I can become an intrapreneur. I, I don't, I, I never consider myself as a smart person. I'm not an inventor. I, you know, I would have maybe become a billionaire by now. Uh, <laughs> but I knew that, you know what, if I work hard, that, that is something that I knew about myself. It's. I fucking work hard. It's like, all right, if I work hard, I knew I can come in and plug into a system that already works and become yeah. an intrapreneur within the Amazon ecosystem. They do shipping for me. They do customer service for me. They do fucking fulfillment for me. I don't got to talk to customers. I don't got to do shit. I did not have the prettiest record. I didn't have credit score. 
I fucking had, you know, um, a couple misdemeanors on my on my record. So no motherfucker was going to hire me or give me <laughs> loans or any of that. They didn't look at my back. You know, they, they didn't do a background check. You know, no. in our community, dude, we have a few felons in there, you know, and it's like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Here, but ain't no motherfucker hiring you, you know? No, but they're Amazon, smashing their own shit. They're exactly. Amazon yeah. does not do background checks. They don't discriminate. Black, white, you know, Christian, Born. Muslim, I don't give a fuck where you come well, from. Go for it. Yeah. Dude, I know. that That's the beautiful thing, right? It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you're doing. That's what I like about business. And especially, for example, Amazon is a great example of this because you're really behind the scene. Yes. Right? Like, it. nobody knows who you are or what you do behind that scene, behind that storefront. Right? So it's really about how well did you set up your business? Did yeah. you follow the steps? Did you execute correctly? Did you good, do good research? You know, that's why at, at, at the blueprint that we provide and the support we have, it's like, did you follow those steps precisely? Because if so, you're probably going to do pretty fucking well, but you can be faceless and nameless all you want, right? A lot of people love that. You know, my wife is a great example of this, right? She has a store. She built it with her brother and her mom, right? That's a family business. It's fucking cool. They love it. They enjoy it. They don't want to be on the internet. They don't do Instagram and shit like at all. And they're just loving building a business behind the scenes and it's providing what they need. Amazon's cool like that. You know, yeah. absolutely. Let me let me ask you a question, man. Um, when people are coming into Amazon, or let's say entrepreneurship in general, but we could stay on the Amazon. What are some of the big mistakes you see when people are starting their business? What are the do nots? I mean, I can tell you my like do nots, um, and and it's like we've already talked about this like few times just in the last twenty minutes here. But it's the same thing that you see people do all the time is allowing their ego to get in the way. Um. And how that manifests is not getting advice from the right people, not getting the right advice, not, and even if they do, not really going and actually like going for it and really asking the right questions. Because I remember for me when it first happened, it was the way it manifested, it manifested in my restaurant business was I would watch some fucking, you know, TV reality show. <clears throat> and it was because it was because I enjoyed watching it, you know, not because I, I was there to like listen and shit and then thinking that I know how to do it. And then when someone would come to me like in person, say, hey, let's partner up. I've ran restaurants before. I know how to help you. My answer was always like, go fuck yourself. I've done, you know, I could do this. You know what I mean? And yeah. then the same thing with Amazon. When I went on, there was a few kids running around with Lamborghinis, fucking 18 year olds. And I was a 25 year old seasoned entrepreneur at 25. My fucking brain hasn't, hadn't even developed by then. And, <laughs> and I was like, well, fuck them. If they can do it, I can do it. You know, I don't need their advice. I don't need their help. I'm going to figure this out. I've had a business where I was managing 10, 15 freaking employees in one freaking shift. What the yeah. hell does this dumbass know? You know what I mean? And so all these thoughts, dude, until now, until now, there is people that we follow and we admire. Sometimes my ego gets in the way of like, well, fuck this guy. I don't need to listen to him, you know, especially oh. like people that are like a lot more financially accomplished and are around my age. I mm. get very like inside. I can sense my ego and it takes a minute for me to like recognize it because that's the thing is you got to recognize it and then say, I like you, but stay the fuck away from me right now. I need to listen and learn. So yeah. I, I truly believe that ego can get in the way and that can manifest in not asking the right questions, not asking questions at all, and then therefore fucking up your, your situation. Totally. So you mentioned that ego can get in the way when people are starting a business or when they're learning something new like Amazon. Let me ask you this, man. Like you just, you talk about your ego getting in the way and it has gotten in the way before, but now you can recognize it and move it to the side. And we know that ego is one of the biggest problems when people are starting an Amazon business. So how have you mastered your ego to be able to recognize it and put it aside? <clears throat> how do you do that? So here's the thing. It's, it's uh, first of all, it's a, um, it's a, uh, it's a work in progress. So I'm not going to say that I'm perfect. I'm still, I'm still, um, I'm still working on it, right? But it's a lot better than before. Um, this is proof of it working right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> if the ego was stepping in right there, you'd be like, yeah, dude, I'm the fucking man. I set you up right there and you don't even know it. Huh? <laughs> I went for it. I was like, let's see if he hooks on that masterpiece piece. And you fucking didn't. That's great. Good shit. I love it. So, right. so yeah, so I think it's, uh, you know, you got <laughs> to fucking trap, man. I failed. Yeah. I failed. All right. You just got to understand that it's um it's a work in progress. Like you're a student of, of like, you're always going to be a student for the rest yeah. of your life. The minute that you believe that you you know it all and you figured it out, that's when you've like truly like you're, you're, you're doomed, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's just a matter of time, you know? Um, but it's about awareness and then looking back and then learning from your mistakes again. And this is where it comes down to like, how do you learn from the, what to, not to do's then it's more like they're more important than what to do's you know what i mean uh -huh. so it's like i went back and i looked at like my restaurant especially after it happened to me twice i looked at my restaurant and then i looked at the the, the first you know few product launches and i was like what can i learn from this like yeah. there is about four years there hundreds of thousands of dollars lost it's like there's going to be something i can learn from this and that's when i was like I kept on seeing the same pattern come up and that was not listening to people, not taking advice. It's like looking back at it, it's like, why didn't I ask questions here? Why didn't I do this? And then as I kept on doing that, I just realized that the ego was coming in the way, you know? And so now the first thing that I do and, and, and you know, something that maybe we don't talk about as much as we should is over the last six, seven, eight months, BJK University has been kind of on a, on a downturn and now we're turning things around and we're kind of, you know, things are starting to look up again. But uh -huh. one thing that I've done is that I've, in my notes, I literally have a, um, I have a note that says, lessons learned from BJKU downturn. And, and I've broken it down into personal and business. What are some things that I've done in my personal life that I could have done better? What are some things that I did in, in business that I could have done better, right? Decisions, whatever. And I uh -huh. just go back and I reflect. So to answer your question, I think reflection is probably yeah. the thing that I'm looking for, is reflecting on the bad times because there's a ton of lessons that you can learn from there. Totally, dude. I would agree with you that reflection is the number one way to bring awareness to your situation, whether it's business or personal. Reflection yes. is everything. It's like, why do we even have a fucking memory? Like, why do we have a memory, dude? It's not so they can remember what flavor ice cream we like or like a joyful time we had with our wife. We have a memory so that we can remember fucking lessons so we don't fuck it up again. Yes. Right? So if you can take notes of your lessons, jot them down, you will not repeat them. If you won't repeat them, you will incrementally get better at everything you do in life. Yes. Right? So awareness comes from reflection and reflection comes from awareness of being able to reflect and needing to reflect. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Mm. Yeah, well, we, we can talk about um, business cycles. I think that's an important thing for the viewers to understand. I saw some comments about that. Um, people were kind of mentioning, I saw a couple of people say like, you know, it goes up, it goes down. How do you manage that? You know, mm, yeah. as entrepreneurs, you're going to have cycles that go up, down, sideways for a while. You have to have to manage your emotions. You have to manage people. You have to manage expectations. How have you dealt with that? running a eight-figure company. You know, one time I watched a video by Grant Cardone. He said, success to people looks like this, up and down and up and down where success Whoa. needs to look like that. And I was like, I don't know about that, bro. I don't know how realistic that is, <laughs> you know? We're going for this, man. We're going for this. Yeah, so so the, he, right. here's the thing. Over time, it needs to look like that if you were to draw a line, right? But yeah. do understand, it's not always going to be like this. It is going to be like that, but the trajectory should look like this going up, right? Yeah. Um, I read the I read Elon's book. It's just called Elon Musk. Uh, he didn't write it. Uh, this uh, guy named uh, Ashley, uh, the author, wrote it, and he spent a lot of time with with Elon. And uh, the thing that I noticed is um, literally, like this was only 2012 or 2014, not that long ago. Tesla had been around for a while. Tesla was on the brink of bankruptcy. And Elon was this far from literally just losing it all. He was going to lose all of his companies, including SpaceX and Tesla, which he had invested all of his um, all of his uh, 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 earnings from PayPal into. Right? He made 180 million. He put in 
uh, 100 in SpaceX, 70 in Tesla, 10 in, in Solar City. And he was literally, th this is why his um, his uh, previous marriage broke, uh, uh, fell apart, was because he couldn't even make payroll. And it literally had, it was like a miracle that it happened. His a contract with, um, with the U.S. government had to go through for him to be able to make payroll and stuff like that. All right, so it had some uh, technical difficulties. We're back online. Don't even know where the last one ended. Um, <laughs> needed to figure out what's happening here, but hey. Maybe get some better AI. <laughs> this is, yep, this is what happens when you're an entrepreneur, man. You kind of jump off the cliff and build the plane as you're going, right? And, and yeah, a lot of people are trying to figure out uh, the perfect, they're ready for the perfect moment for everything to fall perfectly before they jump on and do everything, right? That shit will never happen, man. There's Never no such happened. thing as the perfect moment ever. That's right. You just got to jump. Just got to jump. Yeah. All right. So here's a question. Um, there's got to be some of this. This is kind of fun. I know it's fun for me. What was your first job? And again, guys, if you're watching this, we're literally, you know, pulling like I'm on my phone. There's a list and we're pulling questions from the comments. So if you guys want us to answer your question, drop them in the comments. So uh, that's all we're doing. So, Aaron, what was your first job? Uh, well, I basically had two first jobs, and the reason I had two first jobs was because the first time I actually worked and earned money for myself was summers in college. Okay. I didn't work through high schools or anything like that. I was chasing the world uh, dream of being an alpine ski racer, so I didn't work. I was too busy being an athlete. In college, in the summers, I had two summer jobs that I worked back-to-back -back every fucking day my ass off. In okay. the morning, I was a fly fishing guide. I'd get up at four in the morning five in the morning i'd go pick up the people i'd take them fishing uh i'd drop them off i'd take a second person so i take two two groups drop them off i'd go home have some lunch take a small snooze and then i'd go to my evening job where i was the meat cook at a restaurant called earl's in whistler okay. earl and whistler shit was legendary and so it was a steakhouse and i was the chef there line chef so Fishing in the day, cooking at night, did that shit in the summer during college. Made pretty good money, met a lot of cool people, learned a lot of things, partied a ton in Whistler. Fucking perfect, man. What was your first job? McDonald's. Oh, shit. Did you go to the I... McDonald's University? Yeah. <laughs> I sure did, buddy. <laughs> uh, we lived in Detroit, first uh, first year, 2006. I arrived to America on 06, 06, 06. Oh, shit. Uh, the fucking devil's day. Damn, and, dude. And, um... I, my first job, I was 16 years old. I worked at McDonald's. From there, we went to San Diego in 2007. Again, went to McDonald's, worked there. So in total, I probably worked at McDonald's for about two years. But then literally up until 2015, so the first 10 years of my life, I worked in restaurants. Yeah. My first two businesses were restaurants. Uh, I've had five or six jobs all were in restaurants. And this is why in my mind, I was like, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to be in hospitality. I'm going to have like a, like a, a, a hospitality group. We're going to have nightclubs. We're going to have bars. We're going to have restaurants. Like that's what I thought I yeah. was meant to do in my life and uh, completely uh, turned uh, to a, a different thing, you know? So that was interesting. But restaurant, hey. McDonald's. Yeah. Mc McDonald's. What were some of the lessons you learned from McDonald's? Because those guys, I mean, we know fucking McDonald's billions and billions and billions of burgers later. Like what the fuck are they doing right? Um... Systems, processes, step by Amen. step, you know, like, I don't know what the stat is, but I bet you more than 50 to maybe even 70% of their of their employees are probably under 22, 23, teenagers wow. mostly. Um, and, uh, you know, as a, in America, um, I don't know, I, I think I'm, I'm right, but at 16, I think can get a job, like legally. Mm. Um, by 18, you can get a full-time job. So I'm from 16 to 18, those two years, you need to only, you can only work part-time. So I was only working part-time. I was working uh, 20 hours. So two things I learned from there, number one, discipline, you know, and, and like being on time, showing up, following orders. I think that's really important, uh, especially for a teenager and a new, completely new culture. And number two, mm -hmm. I learned how to manage my money because that was the only source of income that I had and no one else was providing me money. So I actually was able to save up a good amount of money, 
that I later blew in the first two months being in San Diego partying and, and renting boats and shit every weekend with my, right. Rockstar, with my actually. cousins. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. But I learned managing money and I learned uh, discipline, you know, just showing up and, and stuff like that. What are some lessons well, you learned in your, uh, in your first couple jobs? Fuck, a lot of lessons, man. But firstly, I got to say, you can do it too. Kids at home. You heard it here, man. McDonald's to multimillionaire. The fuck does that tell you? If you can't do it, you have no fucking excuses. Yeah. Came from a foreign land, didn't speak the language, started at McDonald's. I can almost guarantee you nine out of 10 people watching us right now had a better start than you as far as the setup they had in America when they landed here or were born here. <laughs> I'm very certain of that. I know I fucking did. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kudos, <laughs> man. That's gold. When I had my first couple of jobs, when I was a cook and a fly fishing guide, I learned a few pretty important lessons that served me very well until this day. One was providing value. So when I was a fly fishing guide, not only did I pick people up and take them fishing, that was my job, I would do extra. So I would show up with a cooler full of water, beers, sandwiches, donuts, Tim Hortons. I would have a cooler of food. That was not part of my job. I didn't have to do that. Nice. But I knew that these people were coming to the bush with me for three hours. They're going to get fucking hungry. They probably didn't think of anything because they're from the city. And I'm going to give them some donuts and some sandwiches, and they're going to fucking tip me out some Benjamins at the end of it. Nice. And I knew that, and it worked every fucking time, and I enjoyed it because they said thank you. Yes. Because I provided value above and beyond. I went the extra mile. Yes. That's one massive lesson I learned from fishing. Yes. From, from cooking, when I was a line chef at Earl's, I was cooking steaks. I learned the the fact you learned how to eat steaks. Well, I learned how to (laughs) fucking eat steaks. That's for sure. (laughs) Till this day, it serves me well. But one thing I learned is that, like, I couldn't multitask very well, and I don't think we are good multitaskers in general. I don't think our mind is especially built for multitasking, especially men. I think women are better at it than men because they they manage the family dynamic, the kids, all that kind of stuff. The men, I think, we're supposed to be more focused. I couldn't fucking multitask in there. I can't tell you how many times I had a steak over here burning. I had chicken down here that was on fire. I had some pork (laughs) chops over there that were raw. Sound like a pretty fucking shitty chef, right? But like, I would realize like, holy shit, I got too many things going on here and I can't focus. Like, let me just fucking cook the fillets to medium rare how they should be and serve it. You know, as soon as they throw their variables at me, my brain. So the lesson I learned there is focus. And this is something I learned from you as well. Focus. Yes. Singular focus on the thing you want, put your head into it, and fucking turn off every other distraction there is. Now, unfortunately, in a restaurant, I couldn't turn off the other distractions. Mm. I may have burned a couple pieces of chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So l- let's let's shift some gears here. You want, you know, w- when we were kind of looking at this, you said, hey, there's something I want to talk about. And, and that's, uh, I think it's a pretty controversial topic that, Personally, in in my personal life, I, there are two topics that I've always stayed away from, and and everyone watching, we're not going in there. We there's there's a reason why we we are going to touch on it, but the two topics were always religion and 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 politics. Those right. were the two things that like even when we were starting this podcast, I'm like I don't really want to touch. I'm not very well educated. I just I'm not interested. But then you said I want to talk about this thing, and I was like eh, I, don't, I don't know if well, we should. But you said no, but hear me out. And I think you've got a great point, especially as a Canadian, right? Someone yeah. that's sitting outside looking in that has kind of like a third person point of view that's not involved in the middle or not involved in the equation. So let, lead the conversation. Yeah, man. So, I mean, we saw some comments. People were like, what do you guys think of politically this and that? Do you think politicians are helping the country? And so we're going to talk about Donald Trump. All right, <laughs> Donald fucking Trump as president. Let's talk about it, man. I believe, okay, I'm firstly, yes, I'm a Canadian. I live in Europe. I've lived all over the world, so I've never lived in the States. But of course, like most people, I know the political scene in the States better than anywhere else because it's like the center stage of all the drama of the world. Right? Yes. Every fucking war, everything that happens, it's like, oh, the States has something to do with it, right? So we all know about the States. When it comes to Donald fucking Trump, I believe he is an asset to the country in a lot of ways. Probably hurts the country in some ways too. I'm not super educated on politics and and his his things he does in office, but I do know that he's an entrepreneur. 
<laughs> and an entrepreneur knows how to manage money and a budget for real. Politicians know how to spend money. Now, this is a very simple, like, low-level sort of way of looking at it, but it's very fucking logical. A politician takes tax money and they spend it. They find ways to pay themselves and their friends and fucking blow all the money so that they can get more. That's literally all that they do, right? An entrepreneur uses OPM, uses resources, gets money, gets funds, and puts it to use to drive value and drive the equity of the thing that they're building up. So if you have someone like Trump who comes in, who's an entrepreneur, who's like, hey, I'm going to take the tax money and I'm going to fucking add value to the country in these different ways, or I'm going to put these policies in place against other countries that are fucking us over with tariffs and stuff so I can have a, um, a balance in the economics 101, supply and demand, he's just doing the basics. And so is he good or bad for the nation? I would say on the good side. If I was American, I'd fucking vote for him. I can tell you that. Mm. What do you think? That's interesting. So I've never said this publicly again. <clears throat> I'd I like to keep, you know, I'm kind of like even nervous trying to fucking talk into this, going into this topic, We're you going know. down the fucking shithole here with oh Trump. My God. Oh, boy. Fuck, what up. have we done ourselves here, you know? Oh, man, it's the beginning um, of the end now. Yeah. <laughs> it goes downhill from here. Yeah. Uh, so up until... 2020, when COVID hit, when I was like at home, had, you know, obviously had a business to run, but I kind of got exposed to the whole media, uh, 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 you know, shenanigans. That's when I actually learned what Democrats and Republicans were, what yeah. red and blue meant, what this did and what that did. I literally had no fucking clue. I had not voted until then. I had became, oh, uh, no, that's a lie. I had voted uh, in 2016, uh, first time ever, didn't know who belong to what party or what their policies were. And this is why I've always stayed away from politics because I, I never, uh, you know, I never even, uh, uh, I've never even like registered to vote up until that point, you know, and just never followed it and it was never interested in it. My father on the other side, completely opposite. My household, I grew up in a household that was, very much into politics. And I just didn't find a need in it because it wasn't something that I can control. So 2016, 2016, sorry about that. 2016 came about and um, I heard of this guy named Donald Trump. And it was the first year that I could actually vote because I became a citizen in 2014 or 2015 or something like that. And I started kind of looking at all the like all the presidents prior and all the candidates and stuff like that. And one thing that I recognized about him that was different was the fact that he is an entrepreneur, just exactly as you said. Right. Oh. And I was like, you know what? He's never ran an office. He's never held office before. He's either going to fuck it up, like completely fuck it up, or he's actually going to make a real change. And to me, I felt like because I'm a U.S. citizen now and I've, you know, the, this country has completely changed my life. I felt like a, I had a moral obligation to participate, you know, and although one vote, you know, it might not change a whole lot, but it's like I have a moral obligation to this country that I need to vote, you know. Yeah. And so actually he got my vote. He got my vote in 2016. Um, now, some can argue that he completely fucked up the country. Some can argue that he's, you know, completely made some incredible things such as, you know, the best um, uh, market that we've ever had uh, in the in the history of the country. Again, yeah. there are a lot of other things that I'm not educated on. This is why I stay away from this topic. But one thing that I recognized about him is the fact that he is an entrepreneur. And as you said, one thing that I, I can't remember, I don't know if it was Patrick, but David or, or someone else, or I think it was Joe Rogan. They said that the problem with politicians is that they've never built anything. Exactly. They've never built anything from scratch and gone through the pains and the hustles of building that thing and actually making it become something. And this is why, personally, I gave my vote to Donald Trump. Now, I've heard that Dwayne Johnson wants to fucking run for president in like 2030 or something like that. And I've heard uh -huh. that he's also going to run uh, uh, as a Democrat. And I'm like, I like Dwayne. I'll probably fucking vote for Dwayne. So <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not either or. I'm not registered as, as you know, Republican or Democrat. But... There are some things that I agree with Republicans on. There are some things that I agree with Democrats on. It just kind of depends on the, the time of the day. 
Yeah. But I think it's really important that you, you know, if you are going to get into, especially as an entrepreneur, one thing that I noticed uh, um, uh, when we were in Business Mastery, uh, Tony's Business Mastery a few months ago, yeah, one of the eight things that he said can influence a business or impact the business, especially negatively, was government policies. So I think as an entrepreneur, it's important for you to know what's happening. Personally, I don't think it's important for you to get too fucking sucked in because especially media outlets will feed you whatever the fuck they want to feed you. They're not going to necessarily feed you the truth. No. And so for me, I always stand behind. I focus on what I can control. My business, I can control. My family, I can control. My personal life, I can control. What the fuck Donald Trump is going to do, what Biden is going to do, what Kamala Harris is going to do, what, what, whatever is going to do, I can't control. I'll give my vote and that's it and I'll walk out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think it's really important for you to know what's happening because the policies and your government, the taxes, the tax yeah. bills, this thing, that thing can impact your business. So I think it's important for you to understand what is happening so that way if you need to pivot and shift, you know what to do. But personally, I still don't think that you should get sucked in uh, into the whole, you know, uh, uh, politics game, which is why I personally, you know, try to stay away from the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to politics, becoming aware that both the media and the politicians are feeding you bullshit and a narrative to get you to think a certain way, to influence the way you make decisions. As soon as you fucking understand that, and I wish more people would, I wish people would wake the fuck up and understand that the media is just feeding you fear to get you to watch shit, right? Big Pharma is feeding you lies to get you to buy shit. Yep. It's like they are businesses. So if you can put that frame when it comes to politicians and you can see both sides of the aisle and it's like, okay, this party has some good thoughts over here. This party has some good thoughts over here. I'm kind of neutral in the middle. Both seem pretty good in some ways. Both seem totally fucked in some yeah. ways. But the thing that I look at from the outside as a Canadian slash Italian living in Switzerland, nothing to do with the States other than, you know, managing business with you over there. I have my eye on the politics there for that exact reason. The yep. policies that we have to be involved in regardless if we want to or not. What are they doing with the tax money? How are the tax lo loops looking this year? What's happening that way? That's the shit you need to be looking at. But the second that you get pulled in to the drama of it and you start thinking that it fucking matters and that they care what you truly think, they don't give a fuck what you think. They want you to view it and watch that watch time as long as possible. They're yes. clickbaiting you. That's all they're fucking doing. So, you know, when it comes to Trump, I, I, I love a lot of the stuff he talks about. I think he's a clown in a lot of ways. I think he's a great guy in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know him that fucking well. Come on, people who, Trump this is that, Trump is a bad guy, Trump's a great guy. Dude, you don't know the guy. You don't fucking know the guy. You don't know what he's really like. Right. Right? We don't know what anybody's really like, celebrities and shit. You got no fucking idea. So it's like, check out some of the backbone policies they're putting in place. And what I really look for is like, who's the less of the fucking evil? Who's right. the less evil? That's the guy that I'm leaning over towards. Not who's doing more good. Who's less fucking evil? Uh, and that's a really dark way to look at it, but it's true, man. You look at some of the shit <sighs> that, that Biden and them pushed through this year. Again, not to go too deep in it, but like some of the shit that they pushed through, some of the bills that they pushed on people that people don't even fucking know that were buried. That's evil. Vladimir Putin, Okay. You want to go fucking dark. Here it is. He pushed through a bill this year that says he's president until he dies. Nice. Everybody voted that's yes a, on That's it. something fucking Saddam would have done. Totally. <laughs> exactly. But everyone voted yes. Why did they vote yes? Well, I don't know. Did they have he, another option? Well, no, they don't. But he buried it in another bill. Right? Nice. He fucking buried it on page 933. And it was like, you know, COVID, 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 COVID. Oh, by the way, president forever. You know? So it's like, they're doing shady shit all over the fucking place. You can't control it. Get back to focusing on your business and focusing on your family and your own life. Yes. But be aware of it. Yes. That's all. Be aware of it. Yes. Yeah, and I oh. think it's important, as you said, it's, it's important to be aware, but just make sure that you're not getting sucked in because at the end of the day, it's like, there's only so much you can really 
get involved in. Like I was literally with my uh, with my therapist this last weekend. We do intensives, quarterly intensives, and you know we always like I've known her for a year. We always do, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know how and where and why. Um, like, polit you know, po po politics happened, and and we started talking about it, and she's like. Oh, don't even get me started about politics. And like, I saw her do this and like sit up and I was like, what the fuck just happened right now? I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. I just witnessed a side of you that I've never witnessed. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to fucking go there. She's like, I don't know if you want to go there. I'm like, nope, keep it professional. Fuck all that. Not, not, yeah. a, not a topic I'm interested in, you know, but it's like everyone has an opinion. And the one thing that it's kind of like, real, and this is why these are the two things that I stay away from religion and, 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 and politics because people create an opinion and they get fucking married to it. Like yeah. they they have a a, a, a a thumbprint with their fucking blood. And it's like, even if motherfucker is out there killing people left and right, nope, I support him, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think there is where, th this is where like, again, this is not just to kind of keep it, keep it uh, about politics, but just anything in life you need to be able to like have a healthy debate with people wow. and listen in to what they're talking about and try to see different points of views because all of us have um all of us have um what what's the word um uh, uh um perspectives no all of us have blind spots right yeah. all of us have blind spots and the only way that we become aware of these blind spots is when we are willing to allow other perspectives other insights come through and having an open mind, you know? And this is kind of one of the reasons that, like, I'm like, dude, if, like, if I was a citizen when Obama was running, I would have probably voted for him. He's a fucking oh, Democrat. Wow. Whatever. I like the guy. He's cool. I still think he's a fucking cool president. I don't know what the fuck, you know, I, I don't necessarily know what policies or whatever he had because, again, I was just not involved. I like Trump. Uh, uh, I think, again, I think he's a, a big-ass fucking troll, uh, and I think he's got a yeah. big-ass mouth, which is why he's... He's, he's gotten king. himself into Dude, the kind of shit he's gotten himself into, you know? He's the king he, troll of all trolls, man. He just the doesn't want to shut the fuck troll. up. It's like, can yeah. you imagine this guy? Like, I can almost see him as a big-ass bully in high school. Big time. Know? Massive. And he's tall, too. Yeah. I, I, like, I could definitely see him as a big-ass fucking bully. And I don't know if I would have wanted to be his fucking best friend in high school, you know? <laughs> um, but it's like, it's like again, I kind of kept that aside and I said, okay, Yes, people say he he had a uh, he had a bunch of money come to him th from his dad, but it's like yeah, he took a couple million dollars and turned turned into a few billion, right? Yeah, he's yeah, claimed, yeah. you know he's claimed bankruptcy a few times, but still look at where he is. So this is where you just kind of need to be able to to look through and say, okay, this is what this guy stands for. This is what that guy stands for. I understand? Can I take good to here? Can I take good there? Can we combine in the middle? Can we kind of? And I think this is kind of where like especially now what's happened with America is we've lost the middle. You know, people have gone completely this way, completely have gone that way. With that said, completely changing the fucking subject because uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to stay here forever because <laughs> we can go into a crazy-ass rabbit hole that I don't want to necessarily go into. Right. Um, here's a question, funny question. We'll probably end the podcast with this. By the way, guys, again, if you're enjoying this, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. would love to answer your questions. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, make sure you guys are subscribing and also turning that bell because uh, you guys will get notified as we post content and stuff like that. Here is that we'll end it on a, on a funny note. Here's a question. What's the most <laughs> awkward or funniest way you got dumped or rejected? <laughs> Dude, I've never been dumped or rejected in my goddamn really? life. Get Dude, the I've fuck been out of dumped here. before. I've got no. a funny ass story about that. Well, it's got, I, don't know, I don't know if it was funny, but yeah. That's a good question. That's a fucking funny question, actually. I uh I, I don't know off the top of my head, man. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't got one for you, dude. Let me ask you, what was the funniest or most awkward way you've been dumped or rejected in your life? So rejected like a bunch of times at clubs and shit, you know, it was probably like because I was drunk, I was like, oh, you know, do you want to dance or something like that, like some stupid thing when okay. I was like 18, 19, but dumped this, this actually, this, you know, now looking back at it was funny as fuck, but when it happened, dude, I like, I got my fucking heart broken for like years. And Jesus. actually when I met Roweda, it took me a minute to open up for her. 
because I was like really heartbroken. So I had met this chick. Uh, this is funny already. <laughs> yeah, I Fuck. I met this Italian chick. Uh, okay. in um. Hey, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In uh, in 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 uh, at this uh, hookah lounge called uh, was it like a nightclub slash hookah lounge in San Diego called uh, Area Fifty One. It was like Man. the hot place in fucking San Diego. This is two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, something like that. Crazy. And uh, you know, we started dating, and you know, like I was, I thought she was everything I, I like, I was looking for, blah blah. And then she turned out to to have just come out of a an abusive relationship. She lived in Boston. Um, and she came out of an abusive relationship and to her, I was like, God, like the way I was treating her. And I had just came out of a relationship where I had walked all over my ex-girlfriend. Uh -huh. I used to cheat on her. I mean, I was a terrible fucking boyfriend. Now looking every time I think about it, I'm like, why the fuck was that girl with me? Yeah. But I was her first boyfriend, her first love. Like she was just totally in love with me. So coming out of that relationship, I had promised myself that I, if I ever go into a relationship moving forward, I'll... I won't be in it unless I know for sure that I'm committed. I'll not cheat. I'll like treat her like she's everything for me. And so I went from this to that. And then I become a fucking rebound for this girl that just came <laughs> out of a, 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 an abusive relationship. I'm treating her like buying her Burberry mm -hmm. fucking watches and shit, taking her out on dinners, like doing all this stuff. Oh. And, uh, and one day I wake up, she's fucking gone. Thanksgiving, bro. Thanks fucking giving. She's gone, <laughs> dipped on me, gone back to her fucking abusive uh, ex-boyfriend oh, and uh, and just left me a, vo uh, a message saying, uh, um, you know, we can't be together, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and the night before, I had fucking given her a Burberry watch. So I was like, I was spent like $500. I'm like, can I at least get my fucking watch back? <laughs> <laughs> and she never fucking, you know, gave back my watch. So if you're watching, I need that fucking watch back. It's been 12 years. <laughs> yeah, in the fucking watch back. Yeah, Jesus. Holy <laughs> shit, final dude. thoughts. Final thoughts is you got smoked by a chick and you were the rebound. That's yes, funny. Yes, I was a rebound. That, Hell yeah, I can were, say that that's happened. There you go. I can say tick, I had my heart broken and, and recovered, so that's good. Yeah, tick that one off and you got back up and, and found the love of your life, man. There you go. That's a true testament, right? It's the same as entrepreneurship, man. One step in the in front of the other, right? Dust yourself off, keep it fucking moving. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Final thoughts? No, man. Um, I'm I really enjoyed talking about the questions and stuff everybody had in the comments. So yeah, that's awesome. I'd love to hear what people's first jobs were. That'd be cool to hear. Like, what, what's you your first job? And are you still fucking in it? Do you want to be online? Like, what was your first job? And what's the reason? if possibly you're looking to go on Amazon or some other side hustle, like why? Uh, like I know for me, I couldn't be a fly fishing guide my whole life. You know how many fucking times I got the lines tangled up with the people? Drove me oh. fucking nuts, bro. Fly fishing, that fly. time. And I have these people who've never done it in their life trying to fucking fish and get all hung around their necks and shit and I'm cutting it off and fucking disaster. And then I go to the nighttime job where I'm cooking steaks and like burning my eyebrows and shit. And it's like, you know, it's a stinky kitchen. You know that fucking world. Yeah. I had the pain of like, I want more in life. This is a short term thing for me. So we want to hear what your short term things were and why you want more in life. That's important. And, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the comments. That's, that's a cool little addition we got here and I'm enjoying that aspect of it. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Again, drop your comments in the um, in the comment section below. Ask us questions. We'd love to answer you guys' questions and uh, let us know how we can help you guys out. And, um, you know, hope to see you on the next one. Boom. Cheers. Catch you later.